Hey yeah, y'all, my name is Brent Hamilton, Miss Trenner, toward the Miss Trenner tribe. And today I want to talk to y'all about Gertog Blood Boil. Gertog Blood Boil is one of the more interesting threat race bosses in Black Temple. Oops, let's fix that. He's one of the few bosses where, as a warrior tank, it is pretty nice to dual wield for a large percentage of the fight. And you might be like, what, Brunt? Why would you do a wield? What? What? Now, whenever you have primary threat on this boss, yes, you want to wear a shield. You want to keep up thunderclap up time, demo shot up time, of course. But the boss, similar to Void Reaver in Tempest Keep, has a threat knockback mechanic, which knockbacks the current tank's threat by a percentage value of their total threat, which means you need to have multiple tanks all fighting for threat as much as they can throughout the whole fight. Let's break it down by phases. What you're seeing now is phase one. We have the boss tanked facing the waterfall on the right hand side and the raid is kind of behind them. Phase two here, he's gonna fixate on one random raid person aside from the tank and give them a bunch of extra health and he's also gonna deal a bunch of extra damage which means that if that person dies, he's just gonna kill the raid pretty much. So whenever they fixate on that person, put a blessing of protection from a paladin, and then you wanna heal the shit out of them. Whenever he shrinks back down, he's back to his phase one mode. He's casting something called blood boil on people in the raid. They just need to take turns stepping back into the back waterfall over there. But for the tanks over here, what we do is we have these tanks here on his back right leg and then we have the melee dps on the back left leg the reason for that is for this poison breath he does now once i get threat i put my back to the waterfall get him in position and i put a shield on if you're curious the macros that i made for dual wield and shield are shift x to dual wield you can see it down here and shift t for sword and board any warrior tank who really wants to come online with big threat needs to be able to flex between these at a moment's notice. For our loadout for this fight, we did one warrior and two bears. You could also do one tank of each kind, or you could do it with two bears and a paladin, whatever your guild has available for tanks. But the principle of fighting for threat still applies. You want to make sure all three tanks have a pretty threat heavy set, but they have good iron shield uptime if they have threat and they can put on some defensive cooldowns and that kind of a thing when they have threat on the boss. He's a pretty simple fight from a tanking standpoint. You're going to be building threat as much as you can whenever you don't have active threat and when you do have threat you go into more of a mitigation gear. Now I'm going to show this to you a little bit with some of my gear in game. This is Zebren. Hey. So this is about what I would use for tanking Gertong Blood Boil, I've got the Vengeful Helm, I've got the Badge Neck, I've got the Tier 6 Shoulders and Chest, and I got the DPS ones, Dory's Embrace, this, and I would dual wield probably something like this, Fang of Vash, though Thunder Fury is still bis in my heart. These two expertise weapons are very good. Whenever you're trying to build lots of threat, it's good to have a fast main hand because that means you get more heroic strikes in. Devastate damage is normalized, so it's whatever for having a slow weapon for big devastates. I do this AP armor pen bow. It is really nice. If I didn't use this, I have some other options here. This is a mitt gun or this for some threat and a little bit of stem. Gauntlets of enforcement with the threat enchant. Threat belt. Got a little bit of stem in there. Hit Angie is pretty good for tanks. And then Vengeful Legs with the Stam Angie Enchant. Vindicator Boots. You can wear this. Or if you want to play it a little bit safer, you could wear a Mitt Ring and a PvP Ring. And I wear Solarians. This helps out the melee in my party and the Hunter Pet. Uh, if you don't have a bunch of melee in your group for some reason, or if you have another warrior who's already doing the Battle Shout, you can do a different trinket. This one is pretty good for threat. Um, you could even use just Bloodlust Brooch for some AP. 
that one's pretty nice and then i want to show y'all a little bit of the launch sequence for really maxing out a ton of threat and the launch sequence uh, you can do that really on any fight that is a major threat check let me see if i can find a guy let's find an elite here that's pretty tough and i'll just test it no guarantees that i'm gonna down whatever i fight here i'm just gonna go hunting but this is one of the must-haves for any warrior who really wants to be able to contend with bear threat and paladin threat many people they talk a bunch of crap about warrior threat but i think a big part of that is people not really knowing the upper ceiling of what a warrior can do now i know there's a bunch of propaganda going around about this tank is the best that tank is the best but the cool thing about warrior is we have big 30 minute cooldowns that do some crazy shit we have shield wall which reduces the damage taken by 75 percent for 10 seconds that is crazy you don't even drop threat like paladins can be super mid by bubbling themselves but they drop threat so they can't tank and bubble at the same time but a warrior can shield wall and still tank with all the threat that they had in that fight and that's awesome the other big one that you can use a lot in raids is recklessness once you have fights on farm and you know how much damage those bosses deal you can do combo stuff like last stand with recklessness and then flip to defensive and you just deal so much incoming threat let's find him um, where's Gruul's little brother I don't think I can solo this guy but I could at least show you the launch sequence let's just do this as an example all right so I want to be a threat beast to practice for Gurtong Blood Boil. I've got my threat gear on, but I've still got a lot of mid stats. I've got 154 Brazil, 413 Defense, and my talent build. I went Impale Prot, three points in Cruelty. And I've got this, pretty nice. The cool thing about Anticipation is it's not defense rating, it's defense skill, which is way more heavy for its value. Okay. People are just farming stuff, that's fine. I've got no quarrels with them. And this server used to be one of the biggest servers for Horde and Alliance, but the Alliance basically died out. They moved away to some other lands. All right, let's try it on this guy. I've got some consumes up. Let's just do this for practice here. Now I'm investing some gold to make you all nice videos. You better appreciate the scrolls. These are expensive. All right, we scrolled up. Let's get that food buff. Only got three minutes left. You want to make sure your buffs are really tight, really clean. Let's put this here so I can just press two and that gives me a little bit of health. Okay, we got our food buff refreshed. Let's make sure we got our offhand sharpened. All this stuff is important if you really want to be the biggest tank that you can. Okay. Now, I wouldn't do this for an actual... Uh, raid, but you can sharpen your main hand because I know I don't have wind fury out here in Nagrand by myself I've got my scrolls up. I've got my food buff If I really want to go ham I can nightmare seed But let's see what we can do here. Let's get some threat here. Watch that tiny threat All right during the hunger you want a box He wants to box he always wants to box me look at him Alright, launch sequence this. This is how we do it. If we want to max that threat as high as possible. Let's get a blood rage before the pull. Actually, if you want the best tank practice, you would actually find a mob from the previous pull and save rage. Let's just get this guy. Hey, give me some rage, bud. Need to get warmed up. If you can enter a fight with full rage, that's a really strong way to get ahead and stay ahead. 82 rage is not bad. I'm on the prowl. I'm hunting whatever this guy is. Cyclops? We're hunting Cyclops here. Okay. Let's top it off. Got a decent bit of rage here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull. 
Let's see what we can do here. Iron shield up as soon as I got him. I'm going to get some initial threat. I'm going to put on Thunderclap and Demo Shout. Best tank practices. Rogue Strike Devastate. Once I get to five Devastates, I'm going to show you all the launch sequence. All right, we've got five Devastates. Battle Shout is up. Berserker Stance. Wreck. Defensive Last Stand. Watch. Look at this. Look at this crazy threat. Okay, but now let's practice. What if? Hear me out. What if? Uh-oh. Let's wave at them. I thought the Alliance died out on this server. Well, in, in any case, I showed you the launch sequence. Now the question is, do we go for the revenge? I thought the Alliance died out. I even... Wow. Okay. Well, they better be flying away. They got engineering goggles and stuff. Man, that's a refreshing thing. I thought the Alliance all left the server, but there is still a Shadow Priest in the spirit fields of Nagrand. They caught me while I was in the middle of something. That's fair, though. That's what the rules of war are. They just attack. Tell you what, that's a bit of a run back. But it reminds me of the times back in uh, Naxxramas. We would have to summon people. And the Alliance and the Horde would just gank the summoners. It was really brutal. Because the summoners were oftentimes low-level warlocks. Like level 20 to level 40 or something. And they couldn't really fight against a Nax Raider. So they're just dead. And I have a warlock assistant... Icky Sticky, and she was doing the summons, but for some reason I could not exist at the same time as Icky Sticky was active, so I wasn't able to save them. So we would need to have defensive squadrons for the people who were doing the summoning, and they would just watch over them, and we had to change the place where we would summon for the raid so we wouldn't get griefed. These were wild times. Nowadays it's just a Nice surprise to see an alliance out there. Nevertheless, I should bring a battle to them out of respect. They caught me while I was busy. Maybe we can find them when they're not busy. Was it a level 68? I wasn't even looking. Okay, let's see what we got here. Shadow Priest is one of the toughest ones for warriors to fight. Especially if you're prot. Now, if they're smart here, they may have just left. Oh, there's Mr. Um, Mr. Dern. Thanks, Dern, for helping. That's our lovely assistant for that launch sequence. But to go over that again... Oh. It's a 70. They got 2k mana. Now, this is just... The law of the jungle here. We got a silly Billy. Who doesn't even care about... Manners or nothing. So we go on him. Get a little pummel there. Can't cast shadow for a bit. And they jumped me when I was doing turn. It's just, this is the circle of life. Now they may be thinking of twice about that decision. It was not very smart. You just mess up a brunt and then you farm in the same spot. Anyways, maybe you feel better or worse about that now, but it is what it is. You jump me in the middle of something, I'm going to just give you a little visit. I'm not going to camp them, but just want to... Make sure they know the food chain. Maybe they beat me and then we learned that it's like a uber shadow priest, but... 
Nope, just someone who doesn't have any manners for someone who's in the middle of a video. Yeah, but this is the sequence. You want to make sure you have all your buffs up. That includes scrolls, elixirs, food buff. And then you want to make sure your threat gear is on. Make sure you can quickly swap between dual wield and sword and board. Make sure you have your battle shout up, full duration. Make sure you have your iron shield up. Even if it's a threat fight, you keep the iron shield up. I have some haste potions in my bags, but I basically never use them in Black Temple or Hajong. These are just for like being fancy and parsing. You wouldn't really say that a haste potion is a responsible move for a tank. The main reason is you have the armor the whole two minutes, but you only have the haste for 15 seconds of the two minutes. So this is way more value for a tank. You can also just hit a sapper charge, even if it's single target. It does help a little bit with threat. And it is modified by Defiance, which is this. Threat generated by 15. Really good. Applies to sappers. And then combo your recklessness and your last stand. Is a really cool thing. Or your recklessness and a nightmare seed. That also works. Because the recklessness means you're going to be taking more damage by 20%, which is a lot more damage, by the way. And then you offset that by 30% more health. So, you may be taking more damage, but you increase your health pool by a bunch, which means you can live. Well, hope y'all found this useful. Gertong Blood Boy is one of the more fun fights to tank in Black Temple. It is nice to be able to dual wield for a little bit and for that to be a legit part of the fight. If you have any other strats or things that you do on that fight, feel free to let me know in the comments. As always, from me, Brun, ancestors watch over you. Stay safe out there, because there might be a Shadow Priest about to jump you in the middle of a Durn the Hunger 1v1. See y'all on the next.